1904. Air date, July 1st, 69. From Television City in Hollywood, the Red Skelton Hour. With the Tom Hansen dancers, the Alan Copeland singers, David Rose and his orchestra. Introducing Spanky Wilson. Our special guest stars, Boris Karloff and Vincent Price. Clem Cadiddlehopper. And here he is, Red Skelton. Mike, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I feel good tonight. You know what we did this, uh, this past week? Uh, Ed Sullivan and David Rose and myself, we all went up to San Francisco. Now, we didn't fly, but we went by train, see? We thought it would be all by ourselves. But there was a convention on the train. There was about 300 bald-headed men. Hmm? <laughs> now, you figure that out. That's kind of frightening. You walk into a car and you see three... It looked like a mass diaper change. <laughs> Well, anyhow, there was one, one little old lady. We had, we had births on, on, the, on, the, on the train, but this little old lady, we saw her sitting there, and, and we felt sorry for her. So I said to her, you can have my uh, place to sleep tonight. So I sent a telegram to my wife, and when I got home, here's what the telegram says. <laughs> Very tired, been up all night, gave birth to an old lady. <laughs> Hey, this is a wonderful time of the year, though. Forty million kids start back to school and 20 million mothers start living again. <laughs> and it, I didn't have time for public school, you know, not too much. In class, I just sat there for six hours a day. I was dumb at one end and numb at the other. <laughs> I'll never forget the first day of school. The teacher confused me. She says, three and three, six. Then she says, four and two is six. Then she says, five and one is six. I got up and started out. She says, where are you going? I said, I'll go home. When you make up your mind, I'll come back. <laughs> school always was exciting, though. The, the first day I was in school, I went there. The teacher, some guy was yelling, doctor, doctor, get a doctor. I asked the teacher what was wrong. And she says, one of the kids followed a quarter. <laughs> I said, forget the doctor. Call the California tax department. They get money out of anybody. <laughs> I remember one day the teacher says to me, which is the heaviest, a pound of feathers or a pound of lead? I says, a pound of lead. She says, no, they're both the same. I says, they are, huh? You stand under a balcony, let me drop a pound of feathers and a... <laughs> <laughs> time the teacher held up a picture she says what is this there's a picture of a deer she says what is this the kid says i don't know she says what does your mother call your father he says that's a louse <laughs> hey i asked the teacher one day i says do why do, do, do all fairy tales start with once upon a time she says they don't sometimes fairy tales start with if i'm elected <laughs> I got a joke. I got a joke coming up now. I got to play three parts. I got to play uh, the little boy, the little boy, the little girl, see, and the moron. <laughs> the teacher says, now, I want you to use the word beans in a sentence. The little girl says, um, my mother cooks beans. <laughs> my father grows beans. We're all human beans. <laughs> Hey, Gertrude, Gertrude and Heathcliff, Gertrude and Heathcliff, the two seagulls, they were, they were talking, see, and she says, um, did you hear what? <laughs> did you? <laughs> Gertrude and Heathcliff, the seagulls, were talking. <laughs> she says, did you hear what happened? A steamroller ran over Farmer Jones's cat. She says, no. <laughs> what did he do, just stand there with a long put? <laughs> I don't, I don't mean to be rude or anything, but, um, lady, did anyone ever tell you that you look like Ed Sullivan? <laughs> I come from dust. You come from dust. 
I, before, before, uh, now that I got you up here, I would like to say one thing. All comedians seem to kid you about the way you act and the way you deliver lines and everything. But I would like to say one thing, that traveling throughout the country, I hear people talk, and one of the reasons they love you is because you have a sincere kindness that actually comes across, and every Sunday night, people think it's about time to have something gentle. Thank you very, very much. And you, <laughs> after 20 years of television, yes. I know better than to stand on a stage with America's greatest comedian and try to trade jokes with him. Oh. <laughs> so, these are the only funny cracks you're going to hear from me tonight. This portion of the Red Skelton Hour is being brought to you by... Ladies and gentlemen, the Tom Hansen Dancers. Do you know the way to San Jose? I've been away so long. I may go wrong and lose my way. Do you know the way to San Jose? I'm going back to find some peace of mind in San Jose. L.A. is a great big freeway. Put a hundred down and buy a car. In a week, maybe two, they'll make you a star. Weeks turn into years of big class. And all these stars that never work are parking cars and pumping gas. <laughs> Skelton as Clem Cadiddlehopper, Boris Karloff as Dr. Nelson Sr., and Vincent Price as Dr. Nelson Jr. in He Who Steals My Robot Steals Trash. And that's what I'll do. Clem, what? Clem, how did you manage to get them bees so stirred up, so Ooh. angry? Well, I wanted some honey for breakfast, and I couldn't get them to set on the waffles. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't move, don't move. Don't Why not? Move. There's Why not? one right on your head. <laughs> oh, my, my, oh. He was the daughter of a butterfly, and he was the son of a bee. <laughs> Clam Cadet Hopper. Yes. Yeah. Did you hurt yourself? Luckily, I hit myself in the head. No, I didn't get hurt. Do <laughs> you want to know why I'm sorry I married your mother? You got me. 
That's why I'm sorry. <laughs> now, look, I've got some news for you. You have? Yes, I went right ahead and rented that there barn. You did? To a couple of medical scientists. Medical now, scientists? Yes, they are people who study bodies. Oh, peeping toms. <laughs> no, they're not peeping toms. They're scientists. Scientists? I used to have that in my nose. No, they're scientists. <laughs> No, it's not the same thing. It does? Scientists, it's a father and a son. Oh, yes? Now, when you clean up the barn in here, I want you to stay away from their equipment. Oh, I see. Yeah, because if you do anything wrong, they did. They mixed the wrong chemicals and blew both of them right through the roof. Isn't that nice to see father and son going out these days? <laughs> I want you to clean out the barn. All right. And don't forget. Before the doctors get here, clean it out. And don't forget, I want you to sweep up the hay if you want breakfast. Well, I'm tired of having hay for breakfast. <laughs> I'd like some food, if you don't mind. Clem. Yes? You are a moron. I was never in Salt Lake City in my life. <laughs> Salt Lake City? Moron? Oh, I thought you said Mormon. <laughs> I'm sorry. Get then. going and sweep. All right, I'll sweep there. Oh, let's sweep up the barn. Sweep up the barn. Sweep up the barn. Do 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 do. That's funny. I had a broom just a minute ago. What happened? <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you. They say I'm the idiot. Honey. <laughs> clean up everything around here. Well, we'll clean it up and we get... Hey, that looks good. Oh! I ain't gonna say it, Curly. No. <laughs> yeah. mm. Well. <laughs> I think we both need to change the mouth voice there, buddy. <laughs> Doctors, I've been messing around drinking their stuff without an appointment. I may get in trouble. I'd better get out of here. That's what I'd better do. Hi ho! Thank you, Frankie. Thank you. Thank you very much, Frankie. That'll be all. My. What a pity he shrunk. Never wash a monster in a cheap detergent. <laughs> Where are you, Junior? Here, coming, Father. <laughs> oh, Daddy. Daddy, I, I, I'm... You know, I'm so sorry I'm late, but I was just burying the Duke of Blanchard. Oh, and what did he die from? The burying. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, Dr. Nelson, Junior, Let's get on with our medical experiment. Our medical experiment? Our medical experiments? It's your experiment. You don't ever let me do anything. I never wanted to be a mad doctor in the first place. I wanted to be a mad dentist. <laughs> now, don't get peevish. You'll get your chance some when you're ready. When you create a classic, as I did. A classic? Oh, big deal. You walk around with heavy feet and a bolt in your head. <laughs> there are thousands of them walking around these days. And not only that, they all play the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, but with this experiment, my boy, we've created a robot that's almost human. And as soon as we've placed the receiver in the cavity, yes. we'll be able to program it. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> then we'll have the, well, we'll have the most lifelike robot that the world has ever seen since Phyllis Diller. <laughs> but it is Phyllis Diller. <laughs> there. Put the wig on. 
You look better with red hair. But why red hair? This isn't a Jackie Gleason show, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, look. He looks intelligent enough to run for office. Well, that's hardly a test this year. <laughs> we can finish the programming later. Now, we've got to call Washington to send us five million dollars to turn out assembly line robots. Five million dollars? Yes. Have you got a dime for the phone? Oh, I'm sorry, but we can reverse the charges, Pop. Oh, you fool. You don't know Washington. They'll give you millions. But to collect phone call, never. Yeah. <laughs> Pop, you're, you're a loafer. I'm not a loafer. You are nothing but a loafer. Oh. I told you to clean up this place. Now, when I was your age, I used to milk the cows and everything. You milked the cows and everything? I bet the chickens and ducks were surprised, boy. <laughs> Salt Lake City. <laughs> Hell, now that he's gone, I've got to get there. Hey, fella, I've got to sleep here. We've got to sleep there. Hi there, fella. Hey, hey. Boy, he's dead drunk. Look at him. Hey, hey, hey there. We got... Jackie Gleason? <laughs> here, you got to get off of here, buddy. I don't care if you are with our experiment. <laughs> Out you go there. Out you go. Zip bowl there. Now, I've got to be awake by, by noon so I can have my lunch. So I'd better set my eyes for 12 o'clock. <laughs> We've got it made, son. Yes, sir. Washington say if the robot is a success, then they'll give us an order for a million to work in Washington. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Look, it, 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 it moves its eyes. It does? Yeah. <laughs> and its head. Yeah. Oh, I've been doing that ever since I was 26. <laughs> and it talks? Well, it took me a little longer for that. <laughs> <laughs> look, look how smoothly he moves. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes he walks without a jerk. <laughs> what that? I said you walk without a jerk. <laughs> you leave yourself wide open, don't you, buddy? <laughs> I dare you to throw that my way again. <laughs> he moves without a jerk. Care to join me? <laughs> <laughs> oh. You know, you know, I'm going to program him. Now, where is his microphone? In his nose, stupid. In his nose. All right, let me see. Testing. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, why not? <laughs> I'll tell you why not. <laughs> Now for the supreme test. The supreme test. See if he can follow orders without asking questions or thinking. Like a vice president. Yes. Now, <laughs> here's the test I'm going to put him through. The test. Walk over there. Walk over there. Oh, all right. Oh, how about that? Huh? Look at that. <laughs> he does the idiot walk. <laughs> you hold her, I'll milk her, buddy. <laughs> Turn around. Turn around. Open your mouth. Look intelligent. Uh, the idiot look, too. Uh, two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> Junior, we're on our way to what? Right. Take to him with us. Just a minute. Just a cotton-picking minute. Where are you taking him? Well, uh, to Washington. He's yeah. going to revolutionize the world. Yeah, we're going to stamp out intelligence. That's what Junior, we're going to do. Junior, hurry up. we got to get to Washington. Well, they're still handing out money for nothing. Yeah. Right. Oh, hello, Clem! Hello. Clem! They've taken my son, Clem. Clem! Clem is gone! <laughs> Clem is gone! <laughs> Ma, we finally got rid of Clem! I am amazed. You say that you have actually perfected a robot? Yes, indeed. He walks, he talks, he laughs, and cries. And when you squeeze him, he says, Mama. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, this all sounds very exciting. Uh, let's have a look at this contraption of yours. Hmm? Very well. Robot, come in through the door. Come in. <laughs> You 
broke the door, stupid. Well, do you know any smart ways to break a door, buddy? <laughs> Say, hey, Usher, what time does the studio tour take place? Usher, I, this is a general. Oh, I'm sorry. What time does the studio tour generally start, sir? <laughs> I am a military general. Oh, that figures. You're too far behind the lines to be a private. <laughs> we shall now demonstrate our thing's intelligence. No, wait a minute. Hasn't there been enough demonstrations here in Washington? Uh. Oh, no. <laughs> Good. You mean uh, we're going to have a, a little test to determine his ability? Yeah, an aptitude test. Aptitude test? Aptitude. You don't know your English. You don't know my family. <laughs> you have no family. We created you. Yes, we are your mother and your father. <laughs> oh, bull rushes. <laughs> You're my mother and father? Well, which is which? Well, you weren't found in a bull rush, Buster. <laughs> <laughs> That's for us to know and for you to find out. Oh, too. come on now, which is which? That's the old witch over there. <laughs> no, probably a <it> was. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know something? What? He feels human. You should have seen me when I was alive. <laughs> You. <laughs> That's enough of that. We're here for a demonstration. I'm getting out of oh, here. Oh, now, wait. Oh, success! Success! Oh, good heavens, Father. Oh. It's the great German scientist, Herr Cut. <laughs> General! General! Finally, after 20 years of experiments, I finally perfected my robot! Oh, <laughs> Herr Cut, yeah. this is marvelous. Now, thank goodness, we don't need your stupid robot. Son, this yes. town isn't big enough for two robots. Yeah. We must find his robot and destroy it. <laughs> oh, I'm proud of you, Popsy. Oh, I'm proud of you. You're just as nasty as you are on the late show. Come on. <laughs> Haircut, you are to be congratulated. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but there's one problem, General. What is that? My robot is... Disappeared. Disappeared? Uh, oh, no, yeah, no. Yeah. We must find it Bad. before it falls into the hands of our enemies. Go, go. go. I've, got to, I've got to hurry and hide. That's what I've got to do. Lock the door so nobody will find it. Stupid thing to do. Where can I hide? Where can I, I'll hide here. That's what I'll do. I'll hide in here. I'll hide in here. No, that'd be the first place they'd look. <laughs> Let's see, where can I hide? There must be a place I've got to get out of here. I've got to get out of here. Uh, any day now. <laughs> Good heavens, look, they come in cans now. Hello. Well, I'm not supposed to speak to strangers, you see. <laughs> I am not programmed to answer that. Speak again. Speak. Speak. <laughs> Are you a dumb animal? Well, that's often been said of me, yes. <laughs> Say, how are you? I mean, who are you? I am XMG49, J-R. Well, I'm Clem Kadiddlehopper, zip code 5721, <laughs> with a little B-O. I am a robot. Well, we won't let your religion interfere with us. <laughs> Sit down, here. <laughs> that girdle must be murder, huh? <laughs> Now, I was taught that I ain't supposed to sit in the presence of a lady. Could I stand in your lap, maybe? You do not understand. Huh? I am a girl machine. You are? Could you make me a back, yum? <laughs> I am a machine. A machine? I am programmed like a girl. Oh, good. Where's your starter button? <laughs> Do something exciting. Yeah, like go down to the butcher shop and tickle pig's feet, maybe? Put our lips together. Put our lips together? <laughs> well, that just ain't my bag, I'll tell you. I got a feeling you ain't gonna be my bag either. I will show you. You will? <laughs> Son? 
There's our robot. Yes, yes, and there's the other one, and it's a girl. I know how to kill the competition. We'll get our robot to destroy their robot. <laughs> oh, yes, oh, I'm proud of you, Dad Sipu. Uh -huh. I'm proud to have come from a long line of rats like you. Uh -huh. Oh, yes, I'll program him for kill. Kill! Kill! Hey, not you, Buster. <laughs> Boils for <laughs> All right, then. Uh, you hate her. You hate her. Uh, you hate her. I do not hate her because she's got my bubble gum now. <laughs> Besides, we're not even married. How could I hate her? All right, now this is an order. Tear the head off. All right. <coughs> oh, you happy idiot? <laughs> Fagan, you're supposed to tear her head off. Well, I can't. That's where all the kissing stuff is. <laughs> I can't do that. I couldn't tear her head off. I couldn't do that. She's a friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The robot has no emotion. He must be human. Well, of course I'm human, or they wouldn't have given me a driver's license. Of course, my license has two restrictions. I that? have to wear glasses while driving and be accompanied by a sane person. You <laughs> didn't create a robot after all. Oh, no, but look, Daddy, I've got one of my very, very own. No. <laughs> yeah. I'll Xerox her. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll have enough robots to rule the world. You're going to do what? You're going to Xerox her, I'm going to huh? Xerox her. <laughs> Since it's left it in, I guess it's okay. <laughs> you can't! You can't marry her. She's no, mine. Come here. No, she's mine. Don't give it to me. She's mine now. Come on. You can't marry a robot. I can if I'm accompanied by a sane person, and that's her. Her. Here. Come on. Now this. This is she's mine too. Here. Oh. Oh. She had a screw loose, Dad. <laughs> Well, don't worry, I'll still marry you. I told you, you can't marry a robot. You can in Las Vegas, then you don't have to wait three days. <laughs> well, I wonder if I forgot anything. <laughs> oh, well, I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm really a fan of yours. That's very kind of you indeed, Vincent. Thank you. You know, I saw one of your pictures last night. Did you really? Yes. What a coincidence. <laughs> I saw you the night before. Really? <laughs> Tell me, was that your last picture? I hope not. <laughs> the two of us. No boogeyman is greater than the two of us. The people scream about the team of Carl and Price, although we're as nice as can be, my buddy and me. They're just the two of us, and we'll be always traveling on. The two of us, there's lots of gore in pictures for the two of us. He used to shine as Frankenstein, and I was the fly. They forced, forced us to die every time to pay for the crime. They killed the two of us, but we'll be always traveling on. And late in the evening, we come out and play a couple of monsters on their merry way. Go to the graveyard for a corpse or two. So, so treat us kindly, you may find the next one is you. Mr. Karloff, you take on, Junior. Oh, no, take a crack at it, Dancy. Ah! Well, <laughs> nice to know you've still got it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
this is the first time I've ever seen the corpse set up with a driver. <laughs> and the corpse happens to be driving, I guess. <laughs> what a macabre sense of humor. What do you mean? You know, I really think you're one of us. Yes, you know, he'd probably be a marvelous monster. Yeah. The three of us. A tavern scout should hear about the three of us. No movie screen has ever seen a ghastlier sight than we, we are tonight on the show. Vote the Three of us, and we'll be always traveling on. Let's say it again. It's just the three of us, and we'll be always traveling on. One more time. It's just the three of us. But I wouldn't miss it for the world. <laughs> hey, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a... Don't go away, I'll be right back. Eh? <laughs> you know, it's hard to stay in this bar. It's, uh, it's a mighty rough voyage, isn't it, huh? <laughs> you know, this is uphill all the way around here. Where you got to... <laughs> uh, it's no use, I'm lost in the woods. <laughs> Over here, pal! <laughs> oh, them golden slippers! <laughs> Hey, bartender, I'll have my usual. What's your usual? A free one. <laughs> and I'll have the same. Yeah. No, no, no freebies. All right, I'll pay for it. Here's somewhere. Somebody's got to pay for the drinks. Oh, they do, huh? Well, I figured I was going to have trouble with you when I came in here because you just don't look right to me. You just don't look right. I've seen a lot of bartenders in my day, but you just don't look right to me. You don't look right. As a matter of fact, I can hardly see you. you know? Somebody's got to pay, huh? That's right. You don't care who pays? Okay, you pay. <laughs> All right. It's worth it. It's worth it to get rid of you two lushes. Now, just a moment. Just a moment. I'm not a lush. I belong to Alcoholics Anonymous. <laughs> I never attend meetings. I send in empties. They give me credit. <laughs> I'm not a lush. I, I can stop drinking any time I want to. I, as a matter of fact, I stop drinking four and five times a day. <laughs> Last year, I didn't drink for a whole year. You didn't drink for a whole year? Not a drop. How did you do it? I froze it and ate it. <laughs> Ooh, sickle. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, there you are. Well, well, up the lips and over the gums, look out, stomach, here she comes. <laughs> I'm tired of doing this, pal. Wait, let me go. <laughs> I gotta get there something. <laughs> I'm very sorry to do this. <laughs> I would have appreciated it if you'd have rinsed out the bottle, fella. <laughs> hey, don't cry. Don't cry, buddy. Don't don't cry. You're getting your you're you're cutting your drink there and it's weak enough as it is. I'm drinking to forget. Forget what? 
I forgot. <laughs> oh, yes. A long many years ago, I was stranded on a desert island. Oh, this is going to be good. <laughs> and the only other living thing on the island was an ostrich. And I was so lonesome that I fell in love with it, and I married it. Oh, how dear. And we had a wonderful little boy. Oh. And then one day a ship came and took him away, and I never saw him again. Oh, have a drink on me. I'll pay for this. Right, how long ago was that? Oh, many years ago. Many years ago. Hey, was the island in the South Pacific? Yes, it was. You married an ostrich? Yep. And a ship came and took your boy away? Yep. Was it a British ship? Yeah. No. Father! <laughs> musical guest for tonight lives up to the title of her very first album, Spanking Brand New. She's an exciting young singer, and we're very happy to introduce her on her television debut. Here she is, Spanking Brand New, Spanking Brand New, <laughs> Miss Spanky Wilson. <laughs> There's a place where everything is fun. The address is easy. Apartment 101. There's a place where all the time is party time. The food is good, the booze is good, and even the ladies' blues is good. There's a place where everything is fun. The address is easy. Apartment 101. Don't have to worry. We can go there any time, day or night. Don't. This place is really out of sight. Grab your coat. I'm about to take you there. If I know you, you'll dig the view and all the things I'm planning to do. Take it done, and I know where it's from. The address is easy. Apartment 101. The address is easy. Apartment 101. <laughs> Try to attend our party. This is the place where you can swing with all the upper classes. Sit on the floor and do your thing. We'll fill your empty glasses. You'll have a chance to dance and sing. Before the evening passes, you will be glad we finally had our party. Look at Jane. She's really getting choppy. While her darling happy chases girls as long as he's able. There's Diane, who wears that awful turban, drinking all your bourbon underneath the coffee table. Dig the shape on what came in with Tony. Betcha those are phony. We've been told she's terribly phony. You can find every kind if you go when we throw our party.
What's it all about? How is it just for the moment we live? What's it all about when you sort it out, Alfie? Are we meant to take more? If only fools are kind, Alfie, then I guess it is wise to be cruel. Let your heart lead the way And you'll find love any day Now, ladies and gentlemen, the silent spot. Tonight, Red plays a very nervous man who has just rented a house near the runway of an Air Force. Here is Red Skelton in... The Nervous Wreck.
Don't go away. Red will be back in a... Here he is again, Red Skelton. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of our sponsors, may I say how proud they are to tell you of their products. And along with our staff, may I say that if during this past hour we've brought you but one second of happiness, then we're proud too. Until next week, we'll say good night for now, and may God bless. Good night. Thank you. When Red's guest will be Pat Carroll. So goodbye until the moment when we'll see you all again to our friends near and far and anywhere Portions of the musical numbers were pre-recorded. This is Art Gilmore speaking.